Welcome to the peak where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Mike Mittman. On this week's episode, how a nonprofit is cultivating farmers while giving back to the community. Winter getaways for your staycation and St. Luke supports an Olympic hopeful. All that and more coming up on The Peak. Farmers provide valuable resources to our communities, but it's getting harder to find land and proper training. See how Seed Farms Incubator Program is ensuring that this industry continues to thrive. The Seed Farm is an agricultural business incubator program. It benefits the entire community by providing land, resources, training to new and beginning farmers. A lot of times it's hard for farmers to launch their new businesses. They lack the capital, they lack the access to the land. We try to solve that problem for them here, provide it all along with some training. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I am a farmer here going through the Seed Incubator Farm Program. Bubbly Hills Farm is a quarter acre that's in production this year. It's all flowers. My experience was great. Luckily, I get to stay here for three to five years, so I'm gonna use that time to just gather as much information as possible. My name's Anton Shannon. I'm a graduate of the Seed Farm Program. My wife and I run Good Work Farm in Nazareth, and I work at the Monocacy Farm Project Farmers face a lot of challenges, access to land, dealing with extreme weather conditions. As climate change accelerates, farmers are really on the front lines of that. The seed farm program benefits beginning farmers and future farmers by providing that initial access to land, equipment. It allows farmers to focus on building up their market base. And one of the things that I remember at the seed farm was having the camaraderie of other beginning farmers and having good mentors helping you in those initial stages. My name is Hannah Cannon and I am the East Side Food Pantry Coordinator. The relationship between the food pantry and the seed farm is they helped us get all of our raised beds built and put into our backyard so that I can continue to produce for our students and our community. There is a wide range of things that we like to grow in the garden. I like to grow a lot of things that our students like to eat. It could be peppers, tomatoes, lettuce, squash was a big one this summer. I think it's important to support the Seed Farm's mission because I'm big on fresh produce and fresh produce and vegetables can help the body and the body is what helps you move and the body is what helps our students move and that is what helps them push a bike along. The Seed Farm is such an important part of our community because there is nothing like this anywhere around our region. I absolutely love seeing all the successes that have come from the seed farm programming. As director of the food bank, I wanna be able to provide food security for everybody in the Lehigh Valley. So it's super important that we're investing in our local food and farm systems because that's where food comes from. It's important that we ensure our agricultural future as well as protect our natural resources. I think it's really important that we're growing and farming in a way that is adding to the ecological health of our community and not taking away from it. Bubbly Hills Farm wouldn't have been a farm without the Zeke Farm. And they helped me gain access to the land, the equipment and infrastructure I needed. I hope the seed farm stays for years to come. It's just so valuable, is all I can say. Them coming to us and offering this to us is amazing, and hopefully this can catch on for other organizations out in the Lehigh Valley, and they can continue to do that also. It feels great to know that there is an organization that is strengthening our food security. Now let's check in with Holly as she explores some winter getaways in our backyard. 
When it's cold outside and you feel like you've been cooped up for too long, it may not be that you need to spend a boatload of money and jet off to a tropical location. I mean, it's cool and all if you're into that sort of thing. But why not a winter escape right here in Lehigh Valley? Come on, I'll show you some fun options. Discover the inspiring natural beauty of Lehigh Valley's Glassburn Inn. Perfect for your winter getaway. Glassburn is located on a peaceful and secluded 150-acre 19th century farm just west of Allentown in Fogelsville, PA. You and your guests will find the venue stunning, relaxing, and the ideal environment to change up the scenery and reset. Spacious rooms and suites are the perfect combination of luxury and rustic charm, creating the ideal setting for your romantic getaway. You're sure to sleep soundly after a relaxing soak in the in-room oversized tub and glass of wine by the fireplace. To complement the luxurious yet rustic accommodations, a full country-style breakfast or candlelit dinner is offered with locally sourced ingredients. Chefs use the freshest ingredients, many of which are produced right on the property's 150-acre sustainable farm or are produced locally at partner farms. Book your getaway at Glassburn. It's a great spot if you're looking for a quiet, secluded, and cozy night you won't soon forget. Now let's head to a historic mansion in Bethlehem. Warm up at the Wilbur Mansion, located in Bethlehem, PA. Escape to the enchanting stay this winter where history and luxury meet. Step into a world of timeless elegance as you enter your private, luxuriously appointed room overlooking the south side of Bethlehem and the steel stacks. A stay here wouldn't be complete without savoring gourmet dining in the intimate restaurant where every meal is a culinary masterpiece. End your day in the gentle warmth of a crackling fireplace, a hot beverage, and a delicious dessert. A continental breakfast made up with seasonal favorites like muffins and fresh fruit parfaits will greet you at your door when you wake up too. Create memories that will last a lifetime. Plan your getaway at the Wilbur Mansion in historic Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The Wilbur is where simple elegance and warm accents create the perfect ambiance for a relaxing stay. This last spot in Easton is entirely unique from the rest. Let's check it out. The Townley House in downtown Easton was designed with something a little different in mind and features 16 guest rooms. The building is steeped in history and reflected in the original wood moldings, hand-carved mahogany staircase, and Mercer-tiled fireplaces. The vibe is intimate, cozy, and warm. As you make your way west toward the Bank Street entrance, there is a subtle transition with a bespoke feel that is modern and bright. The windows are large, there is abundant natural light, and spectacular handmade metal light fixtures and stair railings around the space. The mission at the Townley House is to deliver a level of service and hospitality you might not expect in a small city boutique hotel. Plus, a stay here isn't complete without a handcrafted cocktail at Bar Bix. Get the quaint and colorful stay you're looking for with all of the amenities you could ever need at the Townley House this winter. See, Lehigh Valley has all the fixings of a warm winter escape without needing to catch a flight. So book your stay and tell them we sent you. I'm Holly Jones with Discover Lehigh Valley and that was A Peek at the Valley. We don't have to go far to enjoy a little R&R. &R. Thanks, Holly. Up next, we dive into the importance of physical therapy with tips from St. Luke's. Stay tuned, you're watching The Peak. Complex conditions of the nervous system require extraordinary care. At St. Luke's, it begins with a compassionate team of neurosurgeons with incredible skill sets and advanced level practitioners experienced in caring for patients with conditions of the brain and spine. A neurosurgery visit does not always mean surgery is the only option. And when surgery is the best option, St. Luke's offers minimally evasive neurosurgical approaches. St. Luke's, the neurosurgical care you trust now more than ever. Check out how St. Luke's can help prevent sports injuries. Take a look. Hi, my name is Matthew Johnson. I'm a physical therapist at St. Luke's. I work at our Sports Medicine Rehab Center in Bethlehem. This is Physical Therapy Tips from Physical Therapy at St. Luke's. Today, we'll be talking about injury prevention. Did you know that 25 to 50% of all sports injuries are preventable? 
There's some simple strategies that you can do to reduce your risk. One such strategy is a dynamic warm-up prior to participation in a sport. A simple example of a dynamic warm-up would be walking five to 10 minutes, followed by bodyweight squats and walking lunges. For youth in high school soccer, the FIFA 11 program has been shown to cut ACL injuries in half for teams that implement this as a dynamic warm-up prior to practice and games. Another important concept is proper progression. For example, a runner that increases mileage greater than 10% a week is more susceptible to an overuse injury. Following a slower progression gives our soft tissues and bones time to adapt and strengthen, thus reducing chances of injury. For youth baseball and softball, utilizing pitch counts can reduce missed playing time due to an injury. The MLB Pitch Smart program outlines these guidelines for youth athletes. Thank you for watching. If you're a part of a team or organization that would like to learn more about injury prevention, Physical Therapy at St. Luke's can help. Great tip, St. Luke's. Next up, Chaz navigates through the National Museum of Industrial History to showcase accessibility. Hey friends, I'm Chaz Hayden and this is Front Row with Chaz, a series where I highlight accessibility all throughout the Lehigh Valley. Today, we're at the National Museum of Industrial History. I got my old timey hat on. Let's head inside and check it out. I'm here with Megan, the Director of Development for the National Museum of Industrial History. Megan, I'm so excited to be here. I've never been here before. We're happy to have you. The museum is an affiliate of the Smithsonian, is that right? Yes. We explore the people, the machines, and the ideas that shaped American industrial history. The Lehigh Valley is a cradle of American industry, and we really want to inspire the next generation of workers and innovators. As I was coming in, I saw that there are some exhibits that promote interaction. What was your inspiration behind that? We wanted it to be a tactile and immersive experience that engages all the senses. So there's audio triggers all throughout the building, oral history listening stations. You can even jump in an immersive hot air balloon. Having interactive exhibits is important to the disabled community. A lot of the people need tactile experiences. Speaking of the exhibits, can we get a tour and check out the museum? Of course. All right, question. Mm -hmm. How was the factory built with steel before there was a steel factory here? That's an interesting question. I think you've stumped me a little bit. <laughs> but the mill was vertically integrated, so they kind of were able to do everything. Wow. What are some of the accommodations the museum offers maybe for someone that is visually impaired or needs a sign language interpreter. We are ADA accessible. We have designated parking spots in two different lots. If given advance notice, we can arrange for sign language interpreter or language interpreter for uh, guided private tours. On your website, I saw that there is a virtual exhibit, which sounds awesome. Can you tell me about that? Well, it really started during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. We really wanted to keep connecting with our audiences, so we started virtual tours, virtual field trips. Amazing. Well, Megan, I had a fantastic time today. So much fun checking out everything. I can't wait to come visit and bring more people. Excellent. That's a wrap on this very educational and historic episode of Front Row with Jazz. I'll continue to bring you accessibility all across the Lehigh Valley. Until then, I'll see you in the front row. Everything that we do as far as any grain-related distillation is grown right here. When people come here, we want them to absolutely be friends and family. We, you know, it's not a feeling, it's, a, it's what they are. But I think, you know, when you're talking about lifting your spirits, it's something that you do when you connect with people. St. Luke's has been named a top 50 cardiovascular hospital in the country for the eighth time, and we're in good company. 
St. Luke's has the only local heart care team to be ranked in the top 50, along with Mayo Clinic and the University of Pennsylvania. This means our heart patients have higher survival rates, fewer readmissions, fewer complications, and better patient experiences. Using the highest quality health care standards, no other hospital in the region has better heart care. St. Luke's, the heart care you trust. Darian Cruz has been wrestling since he was three years old and now is an Olympic hopeful. See why St. Luke's and people from all over the country are cheering him on. Obviously, everyone knows Darian Cruz. He lit the world on fire when he won his NCAA championship. What makes Darian special in the wrestling world? His, his attitude and his commitment to being the best. My relationship with Coach Gary McCoy is something that's been very refreshing. He inspires me to work hard, he encourages me. Darian trains at a very high level. He has a strong foundation of wrestling. Just growing up, his dad, his brothers, his family, everybody helped him to understand what it's gonna take to get to that next level. Leading up to the competition, we are working out pretty much five days a week. Breakfast in the morning, lift, going home, get another meal after the workout, hit the mats in the afternoon, some type of cardio. We're constantly just prepping the body getting checked out by Greg, getting worked on. It's important for an athlete to see a physical therapist because to me, the most important thing is to have somebody that's guiding you in the process to achieving your goals. There's different techniques that you can use to help people get onto the field faster, whether it's taping, manual therapy, exercise, different things along those lines. Greg has been awesome. I've enjoyed our conversations that we've had. You know, he's a local guy as well. I would recommend the St. Luke's physical therapy for other athletes because they are constantly on hand. For me personally, I need uh, to have confidence in somebody like that. I've been incredibly blessed to have met somebody like Greg and who just as passionate in physical therapy as I am in, in wrestling. Darian's great on and off the mat. It's so easy to want to help him achieve his goal of ultimately winning an Olympic gold medal. To me, to be a positive role model, I think is everything. You know, that defines my character. I think everybody has influence, both positive and negative. Darian's a great role model. It sounds kind of cliche, but he lives it. He doesn't just talk about it, but if you're gonna do this, you wanna be the best at that, these are the steps you need to take. He does those things. I think Darian's a positive role model for a lot of young athletes because he'll tell me, oh, different wrestlers will reach out to him for advice. What I think is really neat is that he would take the time to answer their questions. It's pretty outstanding to see just like how caring he is. I've been wrestling since I was three years old. I had an incredible journey. Road to the Olympics has been very interesting. So it's something that I've been dreaming about for a long time. It's been kind of overwhelming to think that, you know, I'll have this opportunity to represent, you know, my high school, my family, my parents, my country, my college, you know, to represent children and people, you know, that look like me, same skin color. Darian has a great opportunity to compete at the Olympic Games. He's right there with the best guys in the Pan American region. And it's something that most athletes, they dream about. Darian has such an incredible story because of where he came from. He was an undersized, you know, small kid, and he's done it all without losing the connection to his surrounding environment, his support network, his family. It's just an incredible story from start to finish, and I'm glad that I'm playing a little bit of part of it, and I'm excited to see where the bigger picture turns out for him. I'm very proud to represent Puerto Rico at the Olympics. I'm super excited to get out there and bring home the gold. Joining me today is Matt Johnson, a board-certified clinical specialist in both orthopedic and sports physical therapy at St. Luke's University Health Network. Thanks for being here, Matt. Thanks for having me on, Ashley. So what inspired you to get into the field of physical therapy? Uh, really my own injuries uh, throughout playing sports in high school, uh, football, baseball, injuries that I, I dealt with and had to rehab from, uh, you know, really got a lot of guidance from physical therapists along the way. And when you were working with physical therapists and then went into physical therapy yourself, what did you find were some of the challenges you found working with athletes, such a demanding lifestyle, and why is it so important for them to work with a physical therapist as a part of their training? Really, I think physical therapists is a way to kind of you know, let them know where they're at in terms of their, their progress, making sure that they do not progress too fastly. You know, I think a lot of people feel better than they actually are until they you know, start trying to move a little more than they should. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we're educating them well, they know that they can kind of slow down, you know, stay at the pace that we need them to be, and then that way they can get back to playing their sport. What are some things that you do to work with athletes to help prevent sports injuries in the first place? And maybe not just athletes, but weekend warriors and people who are out for a run. You know, how do you work with them to prevent injuries in the future? We'll get into schools, we'll host events at our office, things like that. We can actually find modifiable risk factors, we'll call them, 
we know if we address that weakness, we can you know greatly reduce their chances of having a shoulder injury or an elbow injury throughout the season. And how important is staying in, in good shape physically, stretching, maybe lifting light weights, in, in staying healthy and avoiding injuries? Yeah, you know, make sure they just have a healthy lifestyle overall. Yeah, you know, athletes that do the right stuff in the off season usually have less chance of injury. So it's very important. At physical therapy at St. Luke's, what would you say some of the really unique offerings are and how do you approach patients that come in and really need care, all kinds of care um, from an injury that they might have sustained? Something that makes you know St. Luke's a little bit different from uh, some other networks would be you know the number of certified board certified uh, specialists that we have. Yeah, you know, we have uh, 15 uh, board certified sports specialists in physical therapy. Um, probably you know more than I would say most networks have in the, in the area or you know across the country. Um, but I think that expertise is really what allows us to um, individualize programs to you know say that specific sport that the athlete plays or um, whatever their their personal situation is. And why do you think that athletes in particular should trust St. Luke's with their physical therapy needs? Experience that we have treating athletes, I think it's a big part of it. You know, how much time and effort we put into educating our therapists and making sure that they, you know, are the best therapists they can be <laughs> in many ways. You know, I think that that expertise, that experience and, um, you know, how much effort that we will, you know, kind of put into their care is, is why they should come see us. And for you, Matt, what do you find most satisfying about the work you do as a physical therapist, not only with athletes, but with your team? In terms of athletes, you know, the biggest thing I like to see is seeing them get back to playing. You know, we'll try and get to the games, work on the sidelines. You know, it's really gratifying to see them back and playing and, you know, get to, to cheer them on, you know, on the field. Uh, you know, get to talk to them a little bit on the sidelines. Hey, how are you feeling? You know, that kind of thing is always great to hear. Uh, and just in general, we love helping people. Yeah, you know, I think that's one of the reasons that most people, you know, become a PT is that we want to help help everybody get better and, uh, and get back and do what they want to do. Well, Matt, thanks to you and your team, Physical Therapy at St. Luke's, for all that you do. And it's great care. And remember, people, if you're not feeling great, you can walk right in, get an assessment. So thanks for joining us, Matt. Thank you. What a feel-good story. I am rooting for you, Darian. I'm Mike Mittman. Thanks for watching. To learn more about anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. And remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. We can go fishing while we're here. <laughs> a lot of fish there. The pigeons are talking to me. Oh. Chaz is going wherever the heck he wants to go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Didn't like that one. Portions of this program were paid for by St. Luke's University Health Network. The Peak TV is a production of ASR Media. To see more of The Peak TV, check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch us on WFMZ Channel 69.